What's up and welcome back to a unboxing review with Gizmo Slip Tech. We've got the Legion Pro 7i with the i9-13900HX and the RTX 4090 175 watt GPU. This has some of the highest performance specs, not quite the most performance, our highest performance specs is there is the higher i9-13980HX and there are technically uh, laptops with faster memory, for example. This has uh, DDR5-5600 in it, um, but overall, this is like 97, 98% as fast of a computer as you could possibly get or pretty close to that. Um, and it's in a fairly portable package, definitely in the high-performance laptop category given its thickness and weight and the fact that it's a 16-inch display. But overall, I'm psyched because this Legion Pro 7i is awesome. Now, I, I am talking from the perspective of someone who owned a Legion 7i for the last two years. I've recently switched to the Blade 18, um, but overall I had a good experience with my Legion 7i with minimal problems, minimal crashes, um, minimal build quality concerns. This Pro 7i is actually a downgrade in certain ways. Uh, for example, there's no longer a glass touchpad, but a plastic touchpad, and I'll talk about that today. Um, I'll talk about uh, a few other things like the thickness increase. This one's a bit of a thicker, beefier one uh, than my Legion 7i, but it's also got higher power limits, which correlates to the thickness increase, right? Because you get a thicker laptop, you get a little bit more power in there. We're going to be testing the laptop in tons of different ways. We're going to do benchmarks. We're going to test the CPU. We're going to test the display. We're going to test... Uh, over 10 different games today. And of course, we are going to take the bottom off and test our speakers. I'll show you the keyboard in action, how to customize the keyboard backlight, and what it looks like in the dark. We're gonna see how bright the display is with the NITS brightness checker and color gamut checker. And um, yeah, and, I'll, and at the end of all of this, there will be detailed summary or like a quicker summary. So if you have a limited amount of time, please at least check that out because that should basically include um, everything we're going to talk about today, um, at least a lot of the most important things. But uh, obviously watch the full thing if you want all of the details on this laptop. And uh, feel free to skip around. There will be timestamps down below once this video has been live for a few minutes. I don't know if it's going to win my heart away from the Blade 18, though I, I don't think so. Uh, but it is certainly a bit more portable in some ways compared to the Blade 18, and yet it has that number pad, which I love. I love a number pad. I love a good keyboard layout, and Lenovo probably has arguably the best keyboard layout out of any laptop currently um, out there, including bigger laptops. And this is a 16-inch laptop, but the keyboard is just like perfectly spaced, just all the functionality that you'd want pretty much. Um, so I love to see that. Anyway, um, let's go over the specs. Uh, how much this guy cost me, and where you can buy one of these as well. So this is the Legion Pro 7i. I did get my hands on this laptop at the beginning of the year at CES. This laptop features uh, some of the highest performance components on the market, and that means we've got an i9-13900HX, which is a 24-core, 32-thread uh, CPU. That's a, a whole lot of performance. Uh, eight performance cores, 16 efficiency cores, um, so those eight performance cores are hyper-threaded. The efficiency cores are not. We have the RTX 4090, 175 watt. Um, and that the 175 watt is the highest performance you can get. This is a laptop GPU. It's not a desktop GPU. And if you want the correlation to desktop performance, it's very close in performance to something like the RTX 4070 Ti or like a stripped down RTX 4080 in terms of its CUDA core counts. Uh, it's just like a lower power RTX 4080 pretty much. Um, and it is phenomenally, uh, should have phenomenal gaming performance to be able to play basically any game at QHD and most games at 4K. Uh, 16 gigs of VRAM will get you uh, no problem in VRAM limitations except for s extremely rare circumstances like in 4K gaming if you're trying to try to take this to a 4K TV or monitor. Um, that's going to be the only situation really where VRAM is going to be an issue, uh, at least currently, maybe in the future, it'll be more of an issue. We have 32 gigs of DDR5-5600, uh, configurable in here, but we actually only have 16 in this unit. Uh, so know that we only have 16 total gigs, uh, certain games does, uh, benefit from 32. So do keep that in mind. We do have a one terabyte SSD in here and it's a QHD 240 Hertz, 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So that's 2560 by 1600 with 500 nits brightness. And it's supposed to only be about 100% uh, sRGB, which is going to be a lower color gamut than most 
of the high-end laptops, which is partially why this is priced on the lower end. Now, there are some talks about um, being able to buy this with a mini LED. Uh, some people in the last live stream were talking about how you can get this with a better quality display. This is not that upgraded display. Um, and I'm not sure exactly where you can buy the mini LED version. It might be only certain markets. Um, not sure, chat. So anyway, that's the overview of this laptop and the specs uh, in it. I think the top competitors uh, against the Legion Pro 7i are going to either be other value RTX 4090 laptops like the Omen 17, which is actually a little bit cheaper for a similar spec configuration, um, or you go something that's even more premium that is, uh, you know, has the glass touchpad, has Windows Hello. This doesn't have Windows Hello. Um, it has maybe a higher color gamut display and maybe a brighter display. So like the MSI GT77 with mini LED, the SCAR 16 with a mini LED. Um, the Blade 16 with a 4K 120 hertz mini LED. All of those have premium features and options, and all of those have Windows Hello. This one does not have those premium features and options, but with this one, you're getting some of the best value performance and bang for the buck in an RTX 4090 laptop. It's close to it. I think the Omen 17 is gonna be just as competitive, uh, if not beating this one out in terms of just straight bang for the buck. But if you can get the Legion Pro 7i uh, on a sale where you're getting a nice discount on it, uh, you can get that price to drop below 3000 for the RTX 4090 variant. Um, occasionally, I know there was a price bug where I saw someone get a 4090 version for like 2600 because of combining a, a, a coupon plus a, a price bug. They got it like $400 cheaper than it was supposed to be or something like that. So. Um, Congrats to those of you that got that deal, but uh, most people are not gonna ever get that deal. So uh, most people are gonna pay over $3,000 for a 4090 version of the Pro 7i for even the baseline config. Um, but as time goes on, I'm sure there'll be other great deals and other coupon codes. And so be sure to check out uh, my laptop list. We're gonna be putting those coupon codes and deals uh, up at the top. Uh, we're gonna modify this and change this uh, some more. And basically, uh, my goal is to be able to put all of the uh, like coupon code uh, filter so that way people will be able to find those coupon codes as well in the top gaming laptop se uh, deal section here. Um, so yeah, anyway, if you're looking to shop around for RTX 4000 series laptops, this laptop list, which is linked down below, links to basically every single laptop you could possibly want to buy. Uh, this year, including a lot of RTX 3000 series laptops now. Um, we're still filling out the data in here. There's so much to fill out and I've been so busy live streaming and focusing on other aspects of my life. I need to get on top of this sheet and get it fully updated. Um, that, is one, that is one of my to-do lists here in May. I really wanna make this sheet as useful as possible for people. Here's the box. We've got like a plastic Legion uh, kind of emblem on it. This is exactly what it shipped in. This was the external box. There was only one box. It was not a multi-box setup. Uh, but the laptop arrived just fine. Um, as you'll see on the inside, it is a, it has foam padding just like the Legion Pro 5 review that I did uh, a couple days ago. So here it is, let's go ahead and take this up. Voila, there's the inside. Let's raise the camera up a little bit more. Here it is. We've got the laptop inside of a cloth, like bag basically. Um, it's not waterproof or anything. We've got this like one inch foam all the way around the laptop inside of the box. Let's take a look at the power adapter. So here's the power adapter. Um, we've got the cable and power adapter in this box. Here is the cable. It is about a six foot long cable and it is a very thick cable. Um, very uh, girthy. It's gonna, that's gonna basically allow lots of power to go through the cable. Um, and here is the power adapter. You can see it is fairly small. It is a smaller power adapter than the Pro uh, 5. Let's go ahead and take this plastic off. So 330 watt power, but we've got the Legion logo on there. I like that. Uh, here is the, the back of it. And this thing is probably the second smallest power brick I've seen so far. Okay, so here's the laptop. Take this guy off. Look at that, you got the Legion logo right here. It's a all metal chassis for the most part. Uh, minimal plastic on it. Maybe some of these accent pieces are plastic, uh, but it feels extremely sturdy in the hand, like a very premium laptop. 
Lifting it up, we've got this uh, white fiber cloth. We'll put that to the side. So there's the laptop right there. Let's close this for now. We'll set this to the side. And let's go ahead and compare sizes against some of the common laptops out there. The Razer Powerbrick is only a little bit smaller. It's actually surprisingly similar in size. I would say the, the Razer Powerbrick is maybe like 10 or 15% smaller, uh, but it's very similar in size. This is the ASUS power adapter right here. So I'll, I'll put that on this side. But you can see the ASUS power adapter is noticeably taller and wider. And then there's of course like the GT77 power brick power adapter, which is gonna be even bigger than this guy, another half inch on each side probably. So um, I really like this Legion Pro 7i power adapter. It's uh, the second smallest so far for 2023. All right, so starting with the Razer Blade 16. So the Blade 16 is the smallest 16 inch laptop. That's a full TDP power laptop. It's definitely probably the laptop to beat in terms of size comparison. So the, the laptop, the, the Blade 16 is about, I don't know, a quarter inch narrower on the side, just a little bit narrower, and then about three quarters of an inch uh, shorter on terms of depth. And then in terms of thickness, the Blade 16 is also noticeably thinner, but not by a lot. Like it's gonna be thinner, but not like by a huge margin. Um, I'd say the back here is maybe two tenths of an inch thicker on the Legion Pro 7i. It's really not that big of a difference. But for people seeking the ultimate in portability, the, uh, the Blade 16 certainly has an advantage. All right, so I'm gonna put the smaller laptop on top. This is the Strix G18 right here. I wanna point out that the uh, Legion is quite a bit smaller on both the width and the depth. We're pretty close to lined up here. All right, so now we're lined up and you can see, uh, you know, the Legion is a little over an inch narrower in terms of depth or a little uh, shallower, about an inch shallower and about an inch and a half narrower in terms of width. That's a pretty big difference in terms of size. Last but not least, we have the SCAR 16. And these two should be very similar in size. The SCAR 16 is basically identical in terms of depth. It like feels almost exactly the same depth. And also in terms of width, I think the SCAR 16 is just a hair smaller. Um, and then on the sides here, you can see we've got uh, about the same width, uh, or sorry, about the same thickness as well. Almost exactly the same thickness between the SCAR 16 and the Legion Pro 7i. So that's a good, um, I think that's a good size comparison for you guys. Taking the Pro 7i apart. So this is Phillips head screws on this, by the way. So all you need is a Phillips head screwdriver to take this apart, plus something to pry the laptop apart. It's not really wanting to pry up very easily. There we go. You really gotta use a good amount of force I'm in there, just barely, not enough to actually get it to open. Now I'm gonna go in with a little bit better prying tool. Ah, there we go. Okay, so now we got it up. So you have to use a pretty good amount of force. You wanna use a gentle tool, kind of like this though, uh, like the guitar pick. And then you wanna use a more firm tool to get the prying to continue to come up. So yeah, okay, I'm trying to get this part to open right around the vents here. And I'm not sure if this plastic piece goes with the bottom or not. So I don't know if I should pry. I don't know if I should pry on this side of the bottom piece or on this side of the bottom piece. There we go. Okay, so the this this plastic piece does come up. Right here, it separates. It's separate. The, the, this side girder piece goes away with the bottom. All right, that's very important to know. It's definitely not the easiest laptop to get into this year, that's for sure. This is a really well engineered internal system. I really love it. There's so much going on here and there's so much good stuff going on too. It's like so much, uh, such a great use of internal space. Like, wow. Okay, so first of all, we have this huge vapor chamber. Look at that. It goes all the way across um, the sides. 
and we have four fan exhausts, so big fan exhausts here, 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 and here, with two big fans. Love it. We have our CPU here, our GPU here, our VRM coverage right here. We have our SSD coverage here, another SSD right here, and we have our Wi-Fi slot right here. We've got our memory underneath this shroud, um, and we have a 99 watt hour battery as well as two large speakers. Really awesome interior for this Pro 7i. Some of the laptops this year, especially the more budget oriented laptops, just not a very good use of the internal space. Where this laptop has phenomenal use of the internal space, um, you don't feel like you don't feel like you're randomly not getting use of some area to create a port. There's a lot of ports on this laptop. You have the double SSDs, you can access the sodium. Obviously, if you were to repaste this, they have a warning here that liquid metal uh, is applied. So you're gonna wanna be careful when you're uh, opening this up. Obviously, any liquid metal application, you definitely wanna be careful. Don't want that spilling onto the motherboard uh, or you can damage things. Love the interior. The upgradability is decent. Taking the laptop apart, not so great because it was a bit difficult. Um, the part that was really difficult was these edges right here. Yeah, this right here, this little lip was difficult because it gets it, it snaps around the side of the laptop with these little snip-ins. So you're gonna need to like kind of get in here and pry it straight sideways, not down, but you gotta go sideways and then down all the way around. And that pretty much is how you get into the laptop. And um, there's a pretty decent amount of ventilation in this bottom chassis as well. So you can get a lot of airflow into this laptop. Overall, really love the interior. It looks like a really design, a really well designed laptop inside. We also have our ribbon cable light or our ribbon light that goes along the front of the laptop. Um, there are no RGB lights in the fans this year, which is a big bummer to me. Um, and the light also no longer wraps around the sides. I wish the light also wrapped around the sides, but it does not. Um, overall, still, you get a decent amount of RGB, more than your average laptop. So let's go ahead and put this thing back together and let's get it put back together and let's get into the, the rest of the testing. I'm gonna focus on the rear of the laptop and sides of the laptop. And I'm going to gently kind of pull this down kind of with my fingers. I might end up using this guy. Uh, just kind of hook it. So on, on this side, we're already in. I'm just going to pop that in. And then on this side, we just got to kind of pull the laptop down and around and get it to snap in. There we go. Looks like that snapped in all automatically. The front snaps in really, really easily. And there's a middle snap in as well. You got to make sure you get this middle one popped in. Putting it back together really wasn't that bad. Just taking it apart. And the key is you gotta pry this away and then up and uh, you know away from the laptop. So horizontal first and then you get your uh, vertical movement. So let's go ahead and get these screws put back in. So when you're putting these screws back in, be very careful to put the correct screw into the correct hole. Or like if I put this screw, this long screw, through the one of the front holes, you'd probably literally just like put the bat, you know, you put the screw into the battery or something, or maybe the motherboard. And that's obviously gonna damage the internals really, really badly. You end up with a broken laptop. Okay, so let's talk ports. This has a really good port selection overall. We of course have the front RGB light bar. Um, you can, uh, no ports obviously on the front, but the light bar looks really good, I think, and is very bright where you can still notice it in a fairly brighter environment. On the right side, we have a Thunderbolt 4 USB-A 3.2. On the rear, we have power adapter port, two USB-A's 3.2s, HDMI 2.1, a USB-C with display port, and then we have our ethernet port and the nice thing about these is that so, pretty much all of these are the top end of their port selection possibilities, uh, except for this one being USB-C instead of Thunderbolt 4, but you do already have that Thunderbolt 4 support anyway. Um, and so it's really not that big a deal. And then the other big thing is, that's kind of a downgrade, is these covers, these little um, icons, used to light up. So these guys right here, 
in the older version of this laptop would be illuminated uh, with like a white light so you could find them easily in the dark. I loved that on my 2021 Legion and it's really disappointing that they took those that feature away from this laptop. Now, on the right side, we have another USB-A. Can you see it? It's really dark, but right there we have another USB-A. We have our webcam shutter and we have our headset port which is on the right side, which is a, a bit of a different design. Usually that's located on the left side. Um, and that's our port selection. Overall, the port selection is very good with four USB A's. Um, and you know, you got the Thunderbolt support, you've got uh, HDMI 2.1 support. I really like the port selection overall. Let's take a look at the webcam. Here's the webcam. I believe it's a 1080p webcam, but it's Based, still basically your average webcam quality. It's not as good as a smartphone or anything. Uh, I am recording a video right now, typing on the keyboard, talking, talking, talking. You notice that uh, at the top of the screen here, when the webcam is active, there is a white light indicating that the circuit leading to the webcam is activated. So you can know that it's activated. If I flip the webcam switch off, boom, the webcam goes off. Um, and of course the light goes out because that cuts off power to the webcam so it cannot be used. Um, and then, so you actually have to have this switch fix physically turned forward in order to activate that webcam. Um, we also have a mic array here for capturing the audio. And uh, you can see the quality or a good estimation of the quality by looking a little bit more at the detailed stuff like the Lumix here or the GH5. Um, you know, it's, this, this webcam is, it's, I would say, slightly better than average compared to some gaming laptops, but it's not an amazing webcam. It's not terrible. It'll get the job done for talking to grandma or getting a business meeting done, um, but you're not going to look super crazy stylish or super high quality with it, uh, but it, it'll get the job done. So that's, that's where we're at with the webcam. We've got the Pro 7i. We've got uh, Roar by Peter Spacey. Let's make sure that we have our, I think is it Nahimic? Let's pull that up. And I also want to mention that the touchpad for me on this has not been an issue or no problem in terms of the click. Uh, all of the clicks have been registering just fine um, compared to the Pro 5, the Legion Pro 5. So uh, even though this probably has the same exact touchpad as the Pro 5. So it probably was just on my specific unit. Anyway, so we currently have Nahemic effects on with bass boost and treble boost enabled. So let's go ahead and play Roar by Peter Spacey. I'm going to hold the mic about 10 inches in front of the laptop. I did not have the volume on 100%, so now it's 100%. Well, so that song primarily tests the bass and the bass sounded really good. Um, the bass was very uh, distinct, clear, uh, but when the mids and highs kind of came in later in the song, the mids kind of felt a little bit muddled. Let's move on to the next song, Fade a Day on Half-Life. very impressed with the bass and the highs. They sound absolutely delicious, but the mids, they just feel a little bit muddled. And maybe that could be helped, maybe that could fi be fixed a bit with the Nahemic software. Uh, Deuce Williams, La 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 Love You. Over 
overall, I really like these speakers. Uh, they're far better than the Legion Pro 5. Much better bass, uh, better clarity, especially in the highs. The mids still have room for improvement. I think they're in like the 8.8 8 range, somewhere in that range. Maybe not quite a 9, but a little bit under that. Um, overall, they have a good amount of volume. The bass is thumpy. Like you can feel the bass thump a bit. It's just not quite as much bass as something like the Blade 18 or the MacBook. But, uh, and then yeah, the mids and the highs are not quite as clean and as clear as those higher end speakers. So that's kind of why it's just a little bit below a nine. Um, probably in like the 8.8 .8 is where I'm gonna give them. At the top here, you can see that we have a Legion Pro 7, 16i RX 8H. We have a little bit of GPU, CPU overview. I don't really use these because uh, they don't give enough detailed information. That said, you can see we have 16 gigs of DDR5 5600 memory, i9-13900H. Uh, we got a Samsung one terabyte SSD, all right? And then underneath here, you can do a system update. I'd use this to update the BIOS today. So we have the latest BIOS update, all right? That's already been done. Um, and when you update the BIOS with the Pro 7i, you just click, uh, basically you check for updates and then you click download and then install and then you have to hit next and it restarts your machine, does the BIOS update uh, all automatically from the moment you hit next. So uh, you don't touch anything and then the laptop reboots and it comes back into Windows. Uh, and so far I've had no problems with the BIOS updates with any of my Legion products. So that's a giant thumbs up. You do have macro key control, so you can set um, some macro keys for your inputs. So if you want a series of key presses to happen when you press a certain button. Under power, you can set your battery uh, capacity. You have your, it also shows you your battery warranty right here. You have one year of battery warranty. Um, battery is in good condition. We're currently at 95% because I was running it on battery life a little bit earlier today. So it's kind of charging up to the max right now. You have rapid charge, which allows you to charge faster than normal. Um, if you want to maintain the longest longevity on your battery life, uh, you probably want to disable that. But if you're in a hurry to charge it, it's, it's no problem leaving that on as well. Um, overnight battery uh, charging will reduce battery aging by setting your battery to only 80% and then up to 100% uh, by the time morning comes. So that way it's not at 100% all day or all night, um, which could be really nice if you're going to use your battery life on a day-to-day -day basis. Conservation mode allows you to extend the lifetime of your battery when plugged in. When you enable this, it keeps the battery to 75 to 80% of the capacity to increase the lifespan of the battery, okay? So this reduces your overall battery life on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, but will increase the longevity of your lithium-ion battery because you don't usually want to keep lithium-ion batteries at 100% charge all the time. Uh, there's always on USB, which will allow you to charge things. Uh, when you have the laptop in sleep mode, okay? That's very nice. You have the Lenovo Vantage toolbar, which you can enable or disable. And I have this disabled. If you accidentally click yes on your Lenovo Vantage when you're initially set up, it will put it in there for you, which is probably not great. Legion Arena is, I think, Legion Bloatware, I believe. Um, there's another button for it right here. I'm not sure exactly what Legion Arena does. Let's see, Legion Arena, access your entire game library. It wants to update the software, but it sounds like it's another game launcher, um, which to me is just redundant and a bad idea. So I probably would not use that. I'd probably uninstall that. Um, under media, you have your uh, camera. Oh, you can adjust your brightness and your contrast of your camera. That's pretty cool. I like that. And then underneath, let's go back. Under uh, hardware scan, uh, you can look at what components you have. Under Nahemic, this is where you adjust your audio. So you can enable or disable this to get more boost or treble. And then under x right Color Assist, you can try to color calibrate your display if you'd like. And there's also, uh, is there Toby eye tracking on this laptop? Um, it looks like there is Toby eye tracking, uh, which allows you to use, I mean, is there Toby eye tracking? 
I know the 7i had it. I didn't know if the Pro 7i had it. Um, this allows you to expand your view or rotate the camera inside of games based on where you're looking in the game, uh, which can be a really cool experience in certain titles. So X-Rite Color Assist basically allows you to color calibrate your display, and I believe it's color calibrated out of the box. Um, let's take a look at the keyboard now and the color spectrum, the Legion spectrum. This is where you can adjust all of the different colors and different patterns of the laptop. Now you can shift between each of these profiles using the FN and spacebar key. Well, I'm just doing FN plus spacebar to switch between these. And the way you set each of these up will determine what happens after the fact. All right, so uh, if we wanna set profile two, which profile two right now is everything is blue. And if we wanna change this, we can add effect. We'll add the effect to everything. We'll set effect to be uh, rainbow wave. You can set the effect to be top to bottom, right to left. Right now it's top to bottom. We'll do right to left. And now it's gonna go from the right side over here to the left side. And it'll do the same colors on the light bar as well, which I really love that. It does a combination of everything. Um, and each of these areas are individually light upable. So if you want the light bar to be different than this area, then you can set it to be just to the applicable area. Um, like if you want the light bar to be off, for example, but you want the keyboard backlight to be on, you can do that, all right? So uh, let's go ahead and highlight all of the areas and we'll do, um, we'll try an always light and then we'll do uh, white. Okay, so there's your, like if we wanted everything to be just all white on color profile two, color profile two is all blue. Let's do um, that rainbow, oh, whoa, that's a rainbow drop effect for profile four. That looks really cool. Let's leave it like that. What is this? Is this an audio? This is audio bounce lighting. So, so it bounces based on what is going on. So if we wanted to, uh, for audio bounce, if we wanted to play some music, this should, yeah. So now we've got the audio bouncing across the keyboard based on what's going on. This looks really cool. Audio ripple lighting comes out from the middle. That is really cool. Um, so those those effects on profile five and then off uh, audio ripple is on six. So um, some really, really cool effects there. I really like it. Um, screw rainbow, I guess that's rotating from the center. <laughs> you can change the speed of these effects to be a little faster or a little slower. You can always, uh, and you can also change clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, so you get a lot of potential options. And to switch between these, you just need to press FN and spacebar, 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 and that gives you all of the different customization at your fingertips. This is a very simple overall system to uh, customize your lighting. I love it. This is really good software. It's easy, it's intuitive, um, and almost anyone can set up the lighting how they want to. Some of the software out there is just not as intuitive and nice as this. Uh, so that is really great. Great job, Lenovo. And this is much better than um, the IQ software they used to have, which was not only harder to use, but also killed your battery life. So. Um, David G says, nice effects. Yeah, I totally agree. This is really overall very good. Um, Super Solar 7, I would pay extra for even an opportunity to upgrade the screen to mini LED or OLED and pay for the upgraded features like glass trackpad, lit ports. Yeah, a lot of people would. So it doesn't make sense to me that uh, Lenovo didn't offer that. Um, like I would pay extra to get all the full RGB lighting as well. Um, like I'd pay $50 more for the full RGB lighting. I would pay $50 more for the glass touchpad. I would pay another $25 for the lit RGB ports. And then basically you're still gonna pay the same price after all those little upgrades. And the mini LED screen, probably $200, $300 for that. After all those upgrades, you're paying the same price as the SCAR 16 or maybe the Blade 16, depending on how everything's spec'd and configured. And also I would, I would really wish Legion uh, Lenovo would also offer the highest end processors as well. They only offer the i9-13900HX. That's not as high end processor. So. Speaking of processor, I think we're ready to start benchmarking this bad boy. Let's get going on that. 
So we're going to get process lasso going here. That's going to be installed. Let's go ahead and get Cinebench R23 turned on. Um, in terms of the Lenovo Vantage software for controlling performance, let's talk about that real quick because we didn't really touch on that yet. But um, basically what you do is in the top right over here, there is a performance mode, which can be uh, performance mode, balance mode, quiet mode, or custom mode. Custom mode uh, allows you to boost your uh, TDPs, you can do other additional things. So if we go inside of this performance option, you have your power limits, you can adjust uh, your temperature limits, your um, your TGP, as well as your temperature targets for your GPU and your CPU. Uh, I love all of this. This is so cool to see. And for advanced users, this is really cool. And you can also have uh, adjust your fan speed and your fan curves now inside of the Legion software. So depending on the temperature range, the, the fans will ramp all the way up potentially to maximum. Today, we're gonna to be testing in performance mode, which is the highest default specs that you can. And we're also gonna be enable GP, enabling GPU overclock. Now, GPU overclock is a factory specification overclock. I believe it's 150 on the GPU clock and 200 on the uh, memory, on the video memory. So. Uh, basically, this is going to be, I think, what a lot of advanced users will use. Oh, it allows you to adjust this right here. You can go all the way up to, it looks like 200. 200 is probably safe, but we're just going to do the 150, which is their defaults. Um, and then 200 on the memory, the video, the VRAM. Um, though I've been able to overclock all the way to 1,000 on a lot of these laptops. But we'll just leave it at the defaults. I'm basically, when I test laptops, I try to test them at the highest default settings. And that's why... We are going to leave these, enable this with performance mode, and we're going to see how the laptop does. Um, auto close mode adds apps that you want to close when you launch a game. Oh, that's kind of cool. Though I'm not sure if I would use that. Uh, network boost, this allows you to prioritize games over other apps when you're playing games. Um, GPU mode, we're currently in hybrid mode. We can use G D GPU only mode, but I've already set in the control panel in here. Um, so if you go into the NVIDIA control panel, you can go to a manage display mode up here in the top left. I'll zoom in on that real quick for you. Um, and you can set it between Optimus, which will switch between integrated graphics for better battery life and your dedicated uh, graphics card, the NVIDIA RTX 4090. Now, uh, you should not have any degradation of performance when you're in Optimus mode or NVIDIA GPU only mode. The main advantage to being NVIDIA GPU only mode is that when you load a game, it won't occasionally load into the wrong GPU. Sometimes some games think it should open inside of the integrated graphics card. If you're in NVIDIA GPU only mode, it won't do that. This, it didn't used to be this way. It used to be when you're in Optimus mode, um, you would be routing yourself through the integrated GPU and slowing down your uh, CPU, GPU connection, and bottlenecking yourself through your CPU's integrated graphics card, reducing your performance, especially in CPU-bound games. We have advanced Optimus in this system. So if, we're, if we are using the RTX 4090, there should be a direct connection between the display and the 4090. It should not have any kind of Optimus bottlenecking unless you're using a display out Perhaps like the Thunderbolt 4, if the Thunderbolt 4 routes through the integrated GPU, then you might run into Optimus bottlenecking. That's the only scenario when using this laptop that you will have that kind of performance degradation occurring, to the best of my knowledge. Now, and I know Asus laptops have this dedicated GPU mode where it literally turns off, it reboots the system and completely disables the integrated GPU. This simply reduces the power consumed by the integrated GPU or the um, Intel CPU, slightly making the system more power efficient, but it doesn't necessarily uh, improve any performance in terms of actual game performance um, because we're already being routed correctly, directly to the GPU, to the display. That said, we can switch to this DGPU mode. This requires a restart if we wanted to reset into it. Um, and that's fine. We can, like I said, it doesn't really affect anything. We could restart into it, we could not restart into it. All of the benchmark data should still be the same um, unless you are going to uh, try to disable the integrated GPU for some reason. All right, so Cinebench R23, let's see what we get in a single run. I'm anticipating 
Uh, we are currently not undervolting this Legion Pro 7i. My understanding is that you can undervolt it though. And uh, I would love to do a live stream tweaking and optimizing the Pro 7i for the most performance with undervolting and overclocking. If that live stream idea sounds good to you, let me know in chat or in the comment section down below. 30,193. That's right in line with what we've seen from other i9-13900HX CPUs. Um, that said, if, if we get this thing undervolted um, and overclocked, um, basically when you're undervolted, it automatically overclocks the CPU, we should be able to get at least 32,000, maybe 34,000 on the higher end, um, maybe even a little higher. I, I, have, seen, I have seen some numbers like 36,000 plus for the Legion Pro 7i, but that's silicon lottery for sure. So we got 30,307. Let's go ahead and check out our temperatures um, and our core clocks. So our core clocks right now, our CPU is doing 4.1 gigahertz across all of the P cores, 3.4 gigahertz across all of the E cores. This is good, not amazing. We have seen like 4.3 gigahertz across the P cores and uh, like 3.5 gigahertz across the E cores once everything is undervolted. Our core temperatures are 80 degrees right now across all of the different cores right now. You can see uh, basically our peak temps have gone up to 97 degrees on some of the cores. So we are reaching that thermal throttle target which is 97 degrees based on the BIOS and the settings that are set up right now in the Vantage software. So we have hit thermal throttle levels. If we undervolt, it will help um, boost our clock speeds and our performance a little bit more, but uh, notice our power, that we're, our power draw was 132. We're also dropping down to 27.8 thousand for our uh, multi-core score there, though we are kind of digging around in HW info, which is going to kind of, you know, reduce our score a little bit, right? So 171 watts, 162 watts to that CPU package. That is very high uh, for our CPU power. I'm very curious if you uh, were to tweak all of those settings in the custom mode, you probably would be able to get quite a bit higher because we are seeing that power limit dropped down to, what is that, 130 watts for the long power limit, which is not enough to really push the CPU to the maximum potential. So initially here, we're hitting the 174 watts. Um, it's probably set to 175 for the maximum short limit, and then it drops down to this 130 power limit, maybe even 125. That's when our temperatures also come really down and are really, really good. Uh, overall, things are looking pretty good. For a non-tuned system, this is performance right in line with almost all the other systems that we've seen. And the temperatures and power limits are also pretty dang good. It seems like our CPU pace job was pretty balanced and that we are, we are not running into one or two cores just instantly heating up to 100 degrees like we were on the Legion Pro 5 with the Ryzen system. Um, so th that's really good. I'm glad to see that. I have started a 10 minute test now. I'm also going to reset. You know what, I'm gonna stop this. I'm gonna give it 30, 40 seconds here just to cool down um, and dissipate some heat uh, before we start a 10 minute test, just so that there's a chance at the beginning for it to just you know kind of ramp up. So I wanna see good temperatures. I wanna all see all these, key these cores go down to like around 50 or maybe a little bit under 50. Like I wanna see most of the cores go down to the 40s basically, and then we can start the 10 minute test. So a couple of the cores are still in the 50s, but almost all of them now are in the 40s. Beautiful. Okay, so let's go ahead and start our 10 minute test now and all of that. So we're doing 4.4 gigahertz on the P cores initially, down to 4.1 gigahertz very quickly, 3.4 gigahertz on the E cores. Our temps so far are in the 80s for almost all of the cores, P core five, P core four, P core four and two, 96 degrees and six as well as 96 degrees. So some of the cores are hitting a little bit higher temps. Um, looks like two four, uh, two, four and six, but they're not hitting it instantly. It took at least 15, 20 seconds. Actually, that was almost a minute for them, the, the cores to hit that high of a temp. So, um, they certainly have some cooling coverage, 
but we are hitting thermal throttling. Now our package power so far has averaged 158 watts during the first minute so far, which is very high. I like to see that much wattage going through the CPU. That's excellent. 132 watts now. We have come down to our long power limit. It's probably after about a minute, it comes down to the long power limit. Now I'm expecting the rest of this 10 minute test to be at a lower power limit you know, between 140 and 125 watts. Uh, and that's also gonna translate to lower overall temps across all of the cores. So you can see that right now, almost all of these cores are in the 70s or low 80s. Our highest temp right now is about 85 degrees on core two. Uh, core four, I guess is 87. Um, but most of these are 74, 75, 77, 79, 78, 80, 81. So our temps are excellent overall, uh, but look at our P core. Our P cores are now only 3.6 gigahertz, 3.7 gigahertz, and our E cores are 3.1 gigahertz. So we've had a significant drop off in our core frequency um, just in this short period of time. And that's because of the power limit dropping, you know? so. Uh, but overall, this is right in line with a, the range of performance that you should expect for an i9-13900HX. The, the system is out of the box, configured pretty dang well to give you a good performance without giving you crazy temperatures. Now, if we, since it's, a, I believe, an unlocked CPU, Lenovo lets you tweak it with Intel XTU and other control softwares like Throttle Stop. That's going to let us undervolt this thing, raise the long power limits. It'll let us push the performance of the CPU up to maximum and really um, give us that the ultimate level of performance control that advanced users will love to see. So uh, the Pro 7i should have that functionality built into it, but I haven't tested that yet. That's my understanding. And if it does, uh, after I, I will do, I'll do more testing with this on my own off stream. And then after tweaking it and testing it out, I'll do another live stream and we can compare an optimized system performance with the Pro 7i versus uh, the default stock performance. And then I'll go through all the different steps you need to take to reach those optimal performance numbers uh, so that you can get the most performance out of your laptop. We're looking at our 10 minute score. Uh, we have 3.7 gigahertz on the P cores, 3.1 gigahertz on the E cores. Our average package temp was 78 degrees for 10 minutes and uh, 85 degrees for the overall package, but the core temps was 78 degrees. So overall, really, really good there. And our overall package power was a little over 130 watts. It kind of started coming down there, but really, really good overall performance out of the gate. I can't wait to see how this thing tunes. Um, after a nice tune with an overclock, undervolt, um, and maybe the custom fan profile and the Lenovo Vantage software, I think we can easily push this over 30,000 points in Cinebench R23. So we got 27,722 stock performance mode um, without any undervolts or any special settings. So uh, will you make a video on that if possible? I do wanna make a video on how to optimize this, this laptop. Um, so overall, this is not peak potential i9-13900HX performance because the default short or the default long power limit was only like 130 watts. And that's all that we need to change really to boost. Like if we could change one setting and get much better performance, it's just raising the long power limit to like 145. And then we would get probably 29,000 something. And then we add a little bit of an undervolt um, then we're going over 30,000. And so, and then we might even go all the way if with, a, with a strong undervolt, probably like 32K. I bet, I bet we could go at least to 32,000 right here for our multi-core score. Overall, great CPU performance. This is gonna be uh, plenty of CPU performance for anyone. Like everyone it's gonna ha be very happy with CPU performance. That said, I do wish we do had, I wish we had the option to get the i9-13980HX. Right? If we had the i9-13980HX in this, we'd be able to push um, even a little bit more on the CPU performance. So starting out here in TimeSpy, we're doing 175 watts or 174.9 there for a little bit. Now we're down to 165, 170, uh, but only 61 degrees on that GPU 
during this initial load. Our CPU is also 68, 70 degrees there. That's also phenomenal, especially considering that we're putting 65 watts of power into that CPU right now. That's really, really good. Um, now, please keep in mind that we do have the Lenovo Vantage default overclocking enabled right now. This is uh, how we're gonna test this laptop today. Because I think a lot of people are just gonna click that overclock button, because why not? Um, I think almost all users probably should, because you're basically leaving performance on the table if you don't click it. It should not impact reliability or performance, uh, stability. It just should increase performance with no downsides, pretty much, especially if you leave it at the stock 150 core clock, 200 memory overclock. So, so just know that if you don't click that overclock button, you're gonna get about 5% less probably on the score. I'm anticipating with this, these settings, I'm hoping we can push at least 22,500 for our time spy score maybe even breaking 23,000, but probably not. I'm guessing 22,500 for times by GPU. Overall, we are seeing so far consistently uh, pretty dang good on the boost clock doing 174 watts again. Well, we've seen a few moments where it dropped down to like 160, 165 watts, uh, but that's normal as the, the load on the GPU maybe is not always sustained 100% perfectly. Uh, and that's typical of video games. So I, what I'm looking for in this test is a consistently high amount of wattage to the GPU, um, especially when we have 100% GPU utilization. We want to be seeing typically at least 170 watts of power most of the time as a minimum um, spec. Like we saw just a moment there for 180 watts. Occasionally we'll see a little boost above 175, but the average wattage we wanna see over 170 for one of these high-end spec systems. Um, you know, like the Aura 17X was a great laptop, but we did not see consistently high wattage pulls on the GPU. And as a result, we also saw reduced performance and reduced numbers in games and in Time Spy. So um, it just wasn't a system that was tuned perfectly, um, but it felt like it could definitely get to the point where it was tuned better just with like a BIOS and driver update. So. So with this basic overclock, uh, just the default overclock, we got 22,045. So we did break 22,000, but we did not get close to the 22.5 mark. Our CPU score, 15,789. These are good results. Um, the CPU score is good. The GPU score is very good. It's not the max that we've seen. You know, we've seen uh, the, the MSI GT77 Titan almost hit 24K with a peak GPU overclock. So uh, definitely not the best possible. That said, this is very, very good performance um, out of the box. I love it. Let's go ahead and run Port Royale and see what we get. How are we doing? looks like our CPU is hitting 80 degrees. That's still uh, well within spec. Our GPU is 71 degrees. And 174 watts looks like uh, that's great. Looks like we have 14,237. That's fantastic. Uh, one test that I've been wanting to start incorporating is Speedway. Um, let's go ahead and pop into Speedway. I'd like to start doing this one as well in our 3D Mark. This is one of the more modern tests that uh, I believe it has ray tracing as part of the test, and it's a and it's. It's got like a nice blend of raw rasterization and ray tracing performance tests. So, so again, notice the uh, the ray tracing here in Speedway. It's very high end graphics in this test, and the <laughs> it just looks simply gorgeous. Anyway, so for Speedway, we got 56, 92. Not even sure where this falls in terms of quality or like the the score. It's obviously I'm sure a pretty good, pretty dang good score, but. Uh, just because we haven't, we don't do the Speedway test very often. Um, but yeah, so about 5,700 for our Speedway test. All right, so let's move back into our uh, display test. My Spider 5 Elite, this guy is uh, great at measuring color gamut, but it tends to underestimate color gamut by anywhere from like six to 9%, probably like seven or 8%, maybe 8% on average, kind of what I estimate. So we are definitely hitting 100% sRGB. If you were to factor that in, 
um, which is what you're expecting. Like if you measure with another tool, it's probably gonna give you 100% sRGB measurement. Uh, and then you're probably gonna be closer to 80% Adobe RGB, 80% of the P3 color gamut with another tool. Uh, that's maybe a little more sensitive. Now, if we go to brightness and contrast, we got 4.2 nits on the low end, which is very dim. If you're in a dark environment, that's gonna be awesome. You're not gonna blind your eyes in a pitch, pitch black room. Um, if you go to four, if you go to the max 100% brightness, we got 490 nits, which is very close to the maximum rated brightness that uh, Lenovo claims. So they claim 500 nits. So that's good that we are very close to it. Too bad we're not above it, but. This is within variance for sure. Like if we measured other areas of the display, we would probably for sure go above 500 nits. Um, we are at 1,020 to one on contrast ratio, which is uh, I think slightly above average. It seems like most of the displays this year have been around the 800 to 900 contrast ratio. So that's nice to see, 1,020 to one. Overall, this is a very good display, um, but on a 3,000 plus dollar laptop, you would ideally want a one uh, closer to 100% P3 and Adobe color gamut. That's probably the main weakness of this display. If there was a weakness, that would be it, I would think. This is not a bad display by any means. And it's not like you're gonna be like, oh, it's such a terrible display. Like it is not a terrible display. You're gonna enjoy movies. You're gonna enjoy video games with this display. It's just when you look at this display, especially side by side with another display that is a higher end display, you would just go, oh, I can see a deeper green. I can see a more colorful blue. I can see a more vibrant bright and the blacks on, especially on a mini LED or OLED display, the blacks look really black instead of being kind of like almost like a washed gray or washed out black. So um, those are the primary differences and drawbacks of this display, I think. The vast majority of gamers are gonna love this display and it's not gonna be an issue for them. We've got over 10 games to try to get through, so we're gonna move through them quickly. We're on basically maximum settings. We're gonna go into the shooting range first and then we'll hop into a, a quick match. Did not change sensitivity down to one. I am getting my aim tuned again. I've not played Apex I haven't had time to play Apex in like a week at least. My muscle memory for aim is like shot right now. All right, so what's our FPS right now? We are hitting. We're hitting the 240. Interesting. It's feeling really good. The display is very responsive. Okay, so we ended up with 236 FPS, 169 for 1% lows. Phenomenal. That is really, really good. Let's go into video. We're gonna just uh, see, we should be able to get basically 300 FPS by just turning off these settings down here. Oh yeah, it feels so good. Honestly, it's hard to tell the difference because it felt really good before. It was still above the screen's refresh rate, even on high settings. But now it just, the 1% lows make it feel extra buttery smooth being a little bit higher. So we're averaging 298 FPS, which is basically the max FPS you can get in this game. Which is great, okay, cool. So, um, perfect. That is That shows you that the eSports gaming on this is gonna be awesome. We go check out here. Oh yeah. You can definitely hear a bit of audio separation left and right sides. Oh yeah, I'm hearing I'm hearing audio separation and spatial uh, awareness on my left and right sides pretty noticeably. Let's see if I can flank these guys. Oh, 
I almost killed him. I did 60 flesh to that guy. Uh, so, uh, wow. I'm actually really impressed with the spatial audio. It's probably the third best spatial audio I've had on any of these laptops um, so far in 2023. I would say the Blade 16 and 18 are better than this. But this is still very close. I really dislike the L-Star as a weapon. I'm gonna drop down here, see if we can find someone. Oh. Dang. Oh, I did. Someone near me. <laughs> I tried mailing him, I missed. We did 98 to that wraith. There we go. We're on a roll. We got a multi kill going here. Uh oh. I'm gonna die. Okay, last life, and then we're gonna move on to the next game. Awesome. So, a uh, phenomenal gaming experience in Apex Legends. Uh, not only do we have spatial audio, left, right, audio separation um, for non-headphone gameplay, uh, but it also is very responsive, high performance. Um, the colors look good. And yeah, it's no complaints at all. It was a great experience. Okay, so popping into our graphics settings, just make sure that we're on the right one. We're on full screen exclusive, 240 hertz, 2560 by 1600. Minimum specs, DLSS enabled, quality settings. Textures are set to high. Turn this down a little bit. So interesting. We are not hitting nearly as high of FPS as I would ideally love to see. Refreshing the averages right there. Now, I don't like these sights that they gave me on this weapon. We should be on dedicated GPU only mode because that's what we have set in the NVIDIA control panel, and we should be having direct connection. So that shouldn't be an issue. Um, so far, we're only doing 98. Let's see when we get down to the ground, see if it's any better. All right, so yeah, so we're still hitting that 98, 100. I'm curious, what if we just went ahead and just disabled DLSS? Does that actually improve our settings at all or improve our performance? No, it's like the same performance having it enabled or not, because we're very CPU bound. So GPU just doesn't matter that much, but we've been running it with DLSS on quality mode on all the other tests. Like these are the settings we were testing with the other laptops and we're getting noticeably less FPS right now. So that's interesting to me. Notice our CPU is pulling 102 Watts. Whew, that's a lot of wattage. Our temperature is still very good though. Look at that. 80. 85 degrees on our temps. So um, it makes me feel good on our temps. Unfortunately, our actual FPS, not as high as I would ideally love, that's for sure. Who killed him? Okay, well, this gameplay is obviously very good. Uh, it's just not as high of FPS as I would ideally love. Yeah, we got him. Okay, beautiful. So we got a, at least we got a shot of me killing someone and then we'll take all their stuff. There we go. So we ended up with 97 FPS for our average, which is certainly below um, what we were getting with the other laptops. Let's try restarting the game, uh, restarting the laptop. That's gonna put it into dedicated GPU only mode because we already set that earlier in the Lenovo Vantage software. All right, so we're still hitting 102 FPS, which is basically right in, the, right in line with what we were getting before. Um, I, don't, I don't know the exact reasons, but we're definitely not getting as much FPS as what we do on the Blade 18, the GT77, those other laptops that we've tested. We're getting noticeably more FPS. 
that said, I mean, this is extremely playable. It's very smooth gameplay. No issues in terms of playability. It's just not as high of performance, right? Now we're in dedicated GPU only mode and we're still getting almost exactly the same FPS that we were a moment ago. So I really don't think that dedicated GPU mode does anything. We're in quiet mode. Wow, that really reduced our, our, our frame rate there. We're in auto mode now. Wow, auto mode, much lower FPS. Oh, we're getting sniped at. Woo. <laughs> Balance mode, enable Legion AI to automatically detect gameplay settings. Let's find out if that does anything for us. Interesting, I think our monitor also changed um, brightness levels. Okay, there we go. Um, all right, so with AI enabled, looks like we're getting the same performance that we had in performance mode. Our CPU is boosting to 108 watts. Our GPU though is only hitting 80 to 90 watts still. Overall, nothing, nothing really improved right there. Um, so I'm just go back to the performance mode and we'll go ahead and switch to our next game because we gotta keep moving along our benchmarks. We don't really know. Our FPS in CSGO right now, it's just insane. Uh, 500, jumping between 500 and 400 right now. Um, really, really good. 600, jumping between 600 to 700 right now, mainly on 600. CSGO is absolutely insane, the amount of FPS you can get in this game. Uh, Randy McNeely with the $14.20 Super Chat. Because $4.20 is just not enough for all this work when you could be gaming. <laughs> Thanks so much, Randy. That's really funny. Uh, super Chat. That was great. Um, no, I really appreciate the support, Randy. Thanks so much. Steve Onashi says, LOL, AI. Yeah, I got to love the buzzwords. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think the AI would actually improve our performance in almost any of the games that we're playing. But yeah. Uh, what's the SSD? It's a Samsung SSD. I'm not sure the exact model. Casual philosopher, no reason to get the 32 gig RAM it's, or 16, 16 gig instead of 32 if you're going to go for a 4090 laptop. Um, I would recommend 32 gigs of RAM if you have the money because uh, 32 gigs of RAM is going to be more future proof. Uh, a lot of games these days are pulling naturally over 16 gigs. Uh, like Hogwarts wants to use like 24 gigs of RAM, like regular RAM. Um, at least that's what I've noticed. So uh, a few other games also pushing more than 16. But that said, Hogwarts still runs really well at six, with only 16 gigs of RAM. It just, I think a lot of games want more, even though they technically can optimize down to 16 gigs if they need to. It's kind of weird like that. I don't know. Um, but in general, I think a lot more games are going to want more than 16 in the future too. So in general, I definitely recommend 32. But at least you can always upgrade to 32 at a later time uh, if you want to down the line, if you run into issues. So 524 FPS 0.22, 524.22 for our CSGO benchmark. That is phenomenal. That is right up there and being very competitive with all of the other laptops we have tested at this resolution become CPU bound. So we're going to turn on frame generation. We're going to go to quality DLSS. I believe we're already on ray tracing ultra, but I'm going to make sure that we're on the right setting. So we're on ray tracing ultra frame generation enabled quality. Let's go ahead and run this benchmark. All right. So here we are. We are in the benchmark now. Uh, the CPU is pulling 77 Watts, the GPU pulling 150 Watts which is interesting. Well, we pushed over 200 watts there for a second. We got 200 watts TDG, TGP on this GPU right here. We saw that we take the screenshot. <laughs> 200 watts. Okay. Uh, 69 degrees on the GPU. Uh, that's very good. CPU temperature also excellent for pulling that high of wattage. Um, overall, we're moving into an area with a lot of different AIs coming out into this open space usually pushes a little bit more CPU performance. Um, I just gotta say, I'm a little disappointed that our GPU is only at 150 uh, watts right now because I think a lot of the other laptops were pushing higher GPU wattage through this section, even though we're doing higher CPU wattage. Um, like for example, on the SCAR 16 and 18, I think it was doing a combined total of like 270 watts through this area. And this laptop right now is only doing about 250 watts total through this area. And our performance is also a little bit lower. Uh, only 125 FPS here. 
Uh, it's still very good. That said, uh, we we need to retest a lot of laptops because Cyberpunk went through a huge patch update with adding uh, new ray tracing settings. Uh, and I believe the way they measured with the benchmark results were a little bit different now. 125 FPS for our average FPS, which is very good. Our min looks like it was 56 FPS. Uh, let's go ahead and swap over to AI mode, balanced mode, enable AI. Here we go. Uh, right now, I believe we're getting less FPS, less SP, less FPS than we were in performance mode. All right. I mean, look at that. We're going, I think we were in the 120s the whole time inside. Um, going outside here now, we're getting one to the 130s. Into the 120s again. Our 1% lows are phenomenal at 95. I want to point out the 1% lows are juicy. Really great 1% lows after dealing with all these 40, 50, 40, 60, 40, 70 laptops where the 1% lows are sucking. Uh, it's great to see, you know? So you can see right here, we're pulling 9.7 gigs on the VRAM, um, almost 10 gigs on the VRAM, 10 gigs on the VRAM now. So uh, looks like we're gonna end up averaging very similar to what we had before, but maybe just a little less, maybe a little more. I don't know, it's hard to tell. 124, the age of AI comes crumbling down with this one result. They have failed. All right, it's just true. We got 1% more in performance mode or one FPS more in performance mode than in AI mode. So um, sorry, AI mode, trash, you lose. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, we're on ultra preset, which is where we wanna be. DLS is on quality, that's where we wanna be. Let's see where we're at. So uh, doing 120, 130 FPS right now. We had a 1% low stutter drop us down, but um, it's coming back up, it looks like. Our 1% low going to 38 right now. Everything's looking very smooth, very juicy. Some really great performance, and honestly, really great performance with really great temperatures right now. We've had a lot of laptops this year just get brought to their knees in terms of thermal throttling on the CPU. Every single Ryzen laptop I've tested so far just maxes out the CPU to 95 degrees or 100 degrees. Um, the Zephyrus, the Zephyrus G14, or maybe no, the Legion, the Legion Pro 5 did 102 degrees in in dead space. So, at least in this one right now, we've got uh, 84 degrees, 83 degrees on that i9 CPU, which is just really, really great. I love to see it. Okay, so let's go ahead and walk. We're resetting, we're walking. Um, interesting, we kind of had a dip in FPS for some reason. I'm just gonna go back. I don't know what that was. I don't know, maybe it's real, I don't know. Okay, here we go. We're, just gonna, we're gonna go, we're gonna see what we get. All right, so, we're walking, 115 FPS, 30 for our 1% lows, a bit on the low side for our 1% lows. That's one thing with the Ryzen chips this year, the 1% lows were almost always a bit better than the uh, than the Intel. Um, but the temperatures were usually spicier than the Intel. Um, so it's a bit, it's very interesting. And in some ways, uh, like if the Intel 1% lows are at least 30, 40 FPS, it's, it's kind of gonna be harder to tell um, the difference in smoothness. That said, uh, if the 1% lows are really bad, you can really tell a difference between the Ryzen and Intel. So, because um, 1% lows, when they're, when they're both over 100 FPS, if the 1% low is double on the Ryzen or on whatever laptop, then the 1% low is honestly a more important value than getting a few more FPS for our, your maximum average. Um, so right here, we got 128.30. That is really, really good. I believe that beats the SCAR 18. Uh, I believe that beats the GT77. Um, overall, really great performance coming out for the uh, Legion Pro 7 in this dead space test. That's phenomenal. Let's move into Dying Light 2. DLS on quality, frame generation enabled, uh, full screen, high quality ray tracing preset. Let's see what we get in Dying Light 2. Oh my goodness, 158 FPS right now in Dying Light 2. That is phenomenal. That is really good performance. 
Steve, Steve now she says, coil wine showed up on day one and disappeared another. I have OCD and my therapist tells me not to fixate on such things. <laughs> yeah, you definitely don't want to fixate on certain things, especially if it really doesn't matter in the long run. Um, like if you use headphones all the time anyway. Uh, Randy McNeely says, no coil wine on my Strix G18. Nice. That's good. Uh, LSB says, can you live stream with different laptops running Cyberpunk with ray tracing on overdrive? Interesting. That, <laughs> you really love ray tracing on overdrive, don't you? Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Um, uh, I think, so Niebuhr, I think you, you said, Niebuhr says quite possibly implying that they could get better gaming performance with the e-cores disabled. Uh, he says e-cores equal low single thread performance with a higher latency. Anything that needs instant response must not be should not must not be run on e cores period um right and i think i didn't i tend to agree with that but the thing is i think uh games by default and intel are smart enough to run the games through the p cores or they should be if they're not then that's a real problem so we got 153 fps with 49 for 1% lows 1% lows don't really matter in this one but 153 Overall for our uh, average, which is phenomenal. That's above average. We've seen a lot of laptops, including the SCAR series, do like 144. So 153 is definitely above average. Okay, so we're at 2560 by 1600. V-Sync is off. 16 by 10 aspect ratio. DLSS is on quality. Graphics is on all ultra settings. It is mind-blowing the amount of FPS you get on the 4090 compared to like the 40, 50, 40, 60, 40, 70s. Um, like I've been testing, like, so initially I was testing almost all 40, 80, 40, 90 laptops. And now going back to, uh, te now, and then I went to test 40, 50, 40, 60, 40, 70 laptops for the last 10 or so laptops I tested. And now going back to a 40, 90 laptop, it's like, holy schmoly. Like we were only getting like 50 something FPS, like 55, 60 ish for this Zephyrus G14 in this same test. And now we're doing 115. It is literally double the fps going with a 4090 laptop <laughs> like double you're paying double the price but you're getting literally double the fps okay here we go like you know you can totally play this game at 60 fps and have a phenomenal time god of war does not need that high of a response rate or or fps to enjoy it but the increased smoothness is quite nice. Uh, 114 FPS, 36 for a 1% low. 1% uh, low is a bit lower than what we saw on most of the laptops, but our one per, our, our average, it feels very smooth. I'm not seeing any stuttering or anything, so it's a little weird that our 1% low is so low. Um, but overall, extremely, extremely good performance here in God of War. You're going to have a, a fantastic time playing games in God of War. Let's move on to Hogwarts Legacy. DLSS is on quality. We need to enable frame generation. We're on the correct resolution there. Frame rate set to 60. We need to uncap the frame rate. We're going to set textures to low just because we're that's how we're benchmarking everything. And we need to enable ray tracing. Uh, now we need to restart the game. Oh, that sucks. This game is a game where you might get stuttering because we're using all of our RAM right now. We're at 15.6 gigs of RAM usage, and we only have 16 gigs of RAM. So, again, this is a game that likes to have 24 gigs of, of RAM. So, please keep that in mind. That might be related to our 1% low stutters. Um, in addition, uh, this area is just hyper complex. It loads tons, it needs to load tons of NPCs into um, the foreground as we run around here. And that also you know, uses a lot of the RAM. So, so yeah, this is one of the most demanding areas of Hogwarts, probably the most demanding area because there are so many NPCs. All right, so we're going to go ahead and run through Hogsmeade now and see what we get. Our, our total FPS has been very good. We're getting quite a few little stutters as NPCs and buildings load in, which I would attribute to our RAM being used up. Our VRAM is not being maxed right now. We're using a, sh a little bit over eight gigs of VRAM. We ended up with 94.9 for our total FPS. It kind of, in my opinion, dropping in 32 gigs of RAM would probably fix this and give us a much higher 1% low. 
if we run if we were to run to areas with less NPCs, we would have um, a lot better one percent lows. All right, so that's Hogwarts. Let's go ahead and move into The Witcher Three. Here we are. I've reset it. We're sprinting. We got a hundred FPS right now, with thirty three for our one percent lows. Yeah, Witcher Three is one game that I have been meaning to go back and beat all the way through. I've played it, I don't know, probably about 25% of the way through, and I really loved it. But it just didn't quite truly um, immerse me. And then I kept getting unimmersed because the quest lines were just kind of muddled and hard to complete sometimes. You're like, wait, how do you complete this quest? It just didn't make sense sometimes. So I need to go back and just look up you know, quest guides on the ones I get stuck on. Anyway, so 118.38, that's very good FPS. Uh, phenomenal performance here in The Witcher 3. We got 490 nits brightness on the display. Very bright, good display, but the color gamut's not as high. We get close to 100% sRGB, about 80% of the Adobe and P3 color gamut when adjusting for my color gamut on my tool. The contrast ratio, 1,020 to one was very good or a little bit above average, um, but not as good as the mini LED. The display is definitely not as good as the some of the higher end, more expensive premium 4090 laptops. That said, I really love the design of the Legion Pro 7i. It feels uh, very premium. It feels a little bit more uh, a, a built like a tank uh, because of, it uses a lot of metal and it's minimal bezel around the, the laptop. You've got a nice webcam, nice, nicer, a little bit above average webcam, not amazing. Overall, very good experience. And the temperatures that we've seen in all of the games has been very good. We've been getting, the GPU has been in the 75 to 80 range in most of the games. The, the CPU has been in the like typically 70, 65 to like 90 range, but usually in the 75 to 80 range in a lot of the games that we've tested. This laptop to me is the complete package in that it's got really just great performance all around at a very good price. It's got a 16 by 10 aspect ratio design for the laptop itself. It's got a metal build. The biggest drawbacks to this thing compared to a lot of other laptops is like, for example, you could save a lot of money going with like the Omen 17. It might be several hundred dollars cheaper than this one, um, but that's a plasticky build. This is a more metally build. You're paying for that. You're also paying for the 16 to by 10 aspect ratio display. You are paying for this almost bezel design going around the sides of the laptop. Um, and you're paying for the other features on it, like the per key RGB lighting, the light bar going across the front. I like the display um, overall. It's not as premium as what you're gonna get in the more expensive laptops, but the performance you're getting for the money is very, very good. We did see higher performance in some of the other laptops, like the GT77 Titans. Uh, CPU default thermals were higher than this. Um, I want to do another live stream. I'm going to do another live stream tuning this Pro 7i to the maximum level of performance. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on that future live stream, the tuning of this machine to get it to the peak level of performance. We're gonna undervolt the CPU. We're gonna raise the power limits. We're gonna max the fans out. We're gonna try overclocking the GPU further more than what the default overclock is capable of. And we're gonna see what kind of performance gains are possible when you put your mind to it. Um, I think you could see probably five to 10% performance gains for sure in the CPU department, another 5% maybe in the GPU department. Um, and I'd love to try to try to figure out like, why did we get so much less performance in Warzone 2? Is there any way we can optimize that and actually get uh, comparable performance to some of the other laptops? In the vast majority of games that we had today, we saw comparable, if not better performance in the Pro 7i to almost all the other 4090 laptops. But in Warzone 2, for some reason, we were getting like 45 to 50 FPS less than the other top end laptops like the SCAR 18, SCAR 16, Blade 18, GT77, all of those were doing so much more FPS in the same areas. So we need to get to the bottom of what's going on with that. Uh, it's probably something related to driver or BIOS issues, and it might just require a driver or BIOS update from Lenovo to fix that. Um, it may not be something that we can fix on our end. Can I recommend the Legion Pro 7i? Absolutely, this is a great value 
for the money. It's one of the best value RTX 4090 laptops that you can get. I do still think that the Omen 17 technically is a bit more bang for the buck, especially if you can get it when it, it does one of these sale days, like or it goes $200 off. But the Legion Pro 7i sometimes does those sale days too. And sometimes you can get this for less than $3,000 if you get it on the right sale day. Now, if you do decide to buy this laptop and you wanna support me as a content creator, there is a link in the description down below, which you can use to buy. And if you do buy it through that link, it does help support me. But you also gotta use a browser that allows cookies to be tracked and stuff like that. So if you use blockers, ad blockers, and tracking blockers that won't really track it. So um, that's it. I also wanna point out that there are coupon codes to this. I use the coupon code extra five, but sometimes it's like game extra five or game April or you know whatever, whatever coupon code is going on at the moment. Um, I do check uh, Google to look for coupon codes. If I ever go buy a Legion laptop, I just automatically always check for coupon codes. So be sure to try to do that. Um, I'm not sure if that's gonna interfere with my uh, commission as an affiliate, it probably will, but whatever, I'm trying to help you guys as much as I can. Another way you can save some money buying the Legion Pro 7i is through Micro Center. So Micro Center sometimes has good deals on the Legion laptops uh, for direct sale, but usually you have to go in store to get those deals and you can't get those through online. So that's kind of a bummer sometimes. Um, yeah, and I never get affiliates for mentioning Micro Center, even though they sometimes offer the best deal. So just know that that's my honesty to you and my commitment to you as a reviewer to try to guide you to the best deal at the expense of my own money. I literally probably just lost a good chunk of money by mentioning that. So I want you to know that I'm here for you and that's my priority and that's why I think I'm a trustworthy reviewer and why you should trust me. Um, I've reviewed almost every RTX 4090 laptop that is for sale right now and I think this is definitely close to the top three in terms of value and bang for the buck. It's probably not the most premium 4090 laptop that you can get, especially since you can get an 18 inch one or a mini LED one, but if you're on any kind of a budget, this is one of the most attractive feature sets for the money, which I think makes it a fantastic option for you. Um, for those of you that are Legion fans and you're, just, you're in, into this style, um, this build quality, it's really great laptop, I think. It's hard to find complaints about it. Um, the biggest complaints are the backtracks from 2021 version, which I've talked about earlier in the live stream. Just like, um, you know, I'm not gonna go over all of them right now, but. Uh, if you enjoyed this live stream review, please hit the like button and hit the notification bell, uh, hit the subscribe button, come back and hang out with me again when we tune this guy for the optimal levels of performance. More live streams with this coming up. We'll overclock, we'll undervolt, we'll have a lot of fun. And of course, lots more reviews coming up soon of more gaming laptops as well. So thank you so much to everyone that's a member and everyone who donated today and everyone who subscribed and liked the live stream. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you guys. See you in the next one. Brandon, out. Bye-bye.